Good evening and welcome to this evening's webinar, day four of our Advent series. And it's good to welcome Sister Sue, who's logged in, and Brother Paul. And it is so good to have your company this evening. We're going to begin by playing to you, if I may, where are we? Here we are. Shannon all, peace be with you. So just sit back and relax and enjoy this beautiful ballad, a gift from my heart. I hope you enjoyed that. I've played that for so many years now that each time I hear it, it really does connect with the heart. This evening really has two themes, 
St. Francis talks about the simplicity of humility and Henry J. Newen talks about how do you pray but first we light our candle for peace because if ever this beautiful world needed peace it is today, tonight and tomorrow. We offer this light in recognition of the conflict in our world, in the Cathedral of God. And we pray with every child of God, for every child of God, regardless of their colour, their creed or their lifestyle choice, or their belief, we pray that we can come together and love one another. Amen. But first, I'm going to read to you some of the words, living the wisdom of Francis. <clears throat> and he chose a theme, a passion for beauty. A passion for beauty. Thomas of Solano, in his first life of St. Francis, said, The beauty of the fields, the pleasantness of the vineyards, and whatever else was beautiful to look upon could stir in him no delight. He wondered at the sudden change that had come over him. For many, a serious commitment to the spiritual path means losing our capacity to enjoy the world fully. For Francis, however, Conversion did not diminish his passion for the world and for people, but interestingly heightened it. Initially, Francis looked out at the Umbrian landscape, a landscape he had loved deeply since his early youth, and he felt nothing. Instead, urgency arose in his heart. Old loves had deserted him, and he sensed a growing desire to amend his life. Even the beauty of creation only reminded him that he should seek beauty herself. He responded by leaving behind a life of financial security, parties, popularity, and personal dreams and began to follow a path of faith. Did he lose his passion for life and for friendship because his heart was cleansed of self-interest, freed of possessiveness and opened to God's love above everything else? Relationships with creation and people did not diminish, but became even more dynamic and fulfilling. He revered the mysterious light pervading the Umbrian landscape, and he witnessed Christ in the faces of the poor and the lepers. He saw mystery everywhere, and reached out to embrace brothers, sisters, Claire, Sun, Rain, and Larks as radiant images of divine presence. Do we have access to the same passions and beauty in our own process of turning to God? Thomas Merton assures us we are living in a world that is absolutely transparent and God shining through it all the time. If we abandon ourselves to God and forget ourselves, we see it sometimes and we see it maybe frequently. God shows himself everywhere in everything, in people, 
and in things and in nature and in events. Until we turn our lives over to God, though beauty can be deceptive, it draws us toward God, but at the same time leaves us feeling empty and estranged. Following Francis, we return first to the source and discover a world that is holy, profoundly holy in itself, drenched in God's presence. And we're left with a one-liner. Has my passion for beauty increased? over the years, or has it lessened? We need to answer that for ourselves. Has your passion of life increased or decreased over the years? Well, I can only speak for me. <clears throat> Mine has increased because I love nature, because here I find God in the simple things, caring for the hens, like being a, a matron of when we have new chicks, when we place the eggs under the broody hen, when she's there faithful every day for 21 days, and then her little clutch appears and she mothers them. She goes without to ensure that the eggs never go cold. What is that saying to you about nature? And we have four little chicks at the moment. Okay, they're five weeks old now, and I've discovered one of the four will be a little cockerel with the most beautiful white eyes and a little tuft of hair on the top. But the mother is so caring for them. She still feeds them. She still throws food to them when the other hands pick on the little ones. Now, what's that saying to you? For me, I learn from nature. I don't learn from the books on dogma or the encyclicals. Years ago, maybe, but today, like Francis, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Because God is present in every blade of grass, in every little seed that you plant. And I know from early this year when I planted so many different vegetables for us to eat and for the hens to enjoy, lots of kale and cabbages. I even put kale seeds in hanging baskets to give them structure and beauty. And when we needed some kale to mix in with the mashed potato, we would cut the odd leaf off. And there were beautiful leaves and full of vitamin C. So what I'm saying to you, for those who are, who are rushing around, they're missing the beauty and the passion of nature. And that's where, for me, God is. We're left with a little prayer from St. Augustine's Confessions. Too late have I loved you, O beauty of ancient days, yet ever new. Too late I have loved you. And behold, you were within and I abroad. Wow, what is that saying to you? Too late I have loved you, O beauty of ancient days, yet ever new. Too late I have loved you, and behold, you were within, and I abroad. Very profound. So let us just be still. And let us just find ourselves in the beauty and in the passion of nature. Let us come to this place 
and let there be no fear. For the moment you surrender your heart to God is the moment something very beautiful happens. The mystery unfolds and the miracles take place. And inevitably God reveals his face to those who are willing to be still, to be patient in trust. And that for me is the Advent story, to walk slowly and humbly with our God and to trust, to trust. But St. Francis shares so much of this life with us that who would have thought a 12th century eco-sustainable spiritual warrior, an ambassador of peace could still could still knock on your heart and challenge you to respond in a loving way. Well, he says this about the simplicity of poverty. When the brothers go through the world, let them take nothing for the journey, neither knapsack nor purse, nor bread, nor money, nor walking stick. Whatever house they enter, let them first say, peace to this house. They may eat and drink what is placed before them for as long as they stay in that house. Whoever takes their cloak, let them not withhold their tunic. Let them give to all who ask of them and whoever takes what is theirs, let them not seek to take it back. One example I would give you, <clears throat> several years ago when I was taking a group to the Red Sea on a retreat, I would look at the international flights to the US and to Canada, and you would see various passengers there with trunks of luggage, and you think to yourself, my word, they must be taking the whole wardrobe. And yet Francis is challenging us. Do we need to be another Imelda Marcus with so many pairs of shoes? Do we need so much surplus? I guess we do if we're materialistic. But if we're detached from materialism, then it has no pull on us. It has no hold on us. And if someone comes into your home and they say, oh, I like that, providing it's not the queen's jewels, we're allowed to share it. But I've been in some people's houses as a district nurse many years ago, and you were afraid to sit down because as soon as you got up to attend to the patient, the person who owned the house would be running around, straightening the cushions and straightening the settee and you felt inadequate, you felt I was an inconvenience. But are you an inconvenience today in your journey? Do you feel an inconvenience in God's ministry? Or do you feel loved, supported? Are you, are you experiencing the passion we've just talked about? Are you understanding the simplicity of poverty? Francis doesn't want us to go without the bare essentials, nor does God. They want us to have the basic essentials, but not to cramp our style and our spiritual paths with too much luggage, surplus to requirements. You only really need one pair of sandals because you've only one pair of feet. Really, when you think about it. But some friends of mine, when I had the privilege of looking in their wardrobe during a spring clean a few years ago, I was almost breathless of the amounts of shoes they had. I think I lost track after 25 pairs of shoes. And I thought, this is scandalous. But that was their obsession. And that was their pleasure, 
collecting shoes. Okay, a certain ruler asked Francis, good teacher, what must I do to become a Franciscan? What do you think Francis said? He said exactly what was said by Jesus in St. Luke's Gospel. Luke's Gospel 18, chapter 18, verses 18 to 33, sorry, 23. And Jesus said to him, you know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he replied, I have kept all these things since my youth. In other words, I'm a goody goody. But when Jesus heard this, he said to him, there is still one thing lacking in your life. Go, sell all your Rembrandts, your Gucci and your Armani and come back and follow me. And Jesus was sad because being God, he knew that the young man would find it very difficult to give up his Gucci, his Armani and his Versace because they had a hold on his heart and yet he was a good person. And I sense Jesus felt the sadness at how materialism can weed its way into us, into our psyche. Because for so many, it gives security, doesn't it? Or does it? But when the young man heard this, he became sad. He became sad he went away and Jesus looked up in him and felt his pain and so is the journey it's like when you run a community like ours you spend a long time in the formation process of discerning supporting nurturing those who come to our community come with an expectancy to be professed yesterday and that's not how God works. It's a discerning process and it's done slowly and lovingly. It's done with care and it's done with discipline from a good heart. But what is so sad when you see someone that you know in your heart has a vocation of service to God and then they choose to walk away and that is their free will and you have to let them go with the blessing and then years later you hear of what they're doing and some have fallen by the wayside and more or less jettisoned all the love and the knowledge and the hope but we have to trust each day our vocation is only given to us one day at a time. It wasn't like that in the religious life for some of our members. I remember as a young nursing monk, a lot of the professed monks, they almost had a mentality that this was their meal ticket for life and that they didn't have to contribute. Some did, many didn't. And a complacency came in and then indifference and sadness, and they weren't living a fulfilled life full of passion. Today, I would say to anyone thinking of a monastic vocation into our community, just live for today. We're only given today. And let us live this day as if it were our last day. And regarding Advent, we must take each day in its entirety. And yes, Christmas we know isn't far away, but we must try and stay in the moment, stay in the presence of the moment and just celebrate 
our ups and our downs, our highs and our lows, and trust that God will show us the way. And that God, Mother Mary, the Holy Family, with our guardian angel and all those whom we, whom we subscribe to, that they will pave the way for us so that we can be true to our heart, to reclaim who we are, a child of God. Francis leaves us a beautiful prayer. Lord of all simplicity, so many people have made getting things the focus of this season of your birth. Material things are only good to the degree that they help us grow in our relationship with you. Help us learn from the example of Francis, the less we have, the less we have to worry about and the more we can keep a focus on what is really important, you. And he gives us an idea for an Advent action. And he says, can't think of what to buy for a friend or a loved one who has everything. Instead of purchasing something, let that special person know how much he or she means to you in a card or a letter. And that's a lovely thought. Be still now. Let us just reflect on our journey, on that beautiful journey with the Holy Family. So just make yourself comfortable and just experience the desert breeze, experience the warmth of the afternoon sun, experience the joy of being in the presence of Mary and Joseph, experience the love they bring to you and experience the joy in your heart as you walk slowly with them. And as the three of you go through the Judean hills, you are aware that in the very near future, things will change. On a spiritual level, something profound will take place that God will become incarnate in a helpless child. But now we walk with Mary, who's weary, who's weary of the rocks and the stones that the donkey tries to avoid. And this beautiful donkey knows her every need and knows that risks his own life trying to avoid the rocky surfaces and the donkey has so much love knowing that on its back it carries the mother of God with the child of God and as you walk slowly through the Judean hills it is peace perfect peace and all is well and Mary looks happy and content and she's forever reaching out her hand to touch your hand because she intuitively knows that there are days when it's tough for you, when you want to give up, when illness, despair, rejection, misunderstandings may be weigh heavy on your heart and the very touch of her hand fills you with the inner peace of God and it wants for you to reach out to her and to bring to her a smile and to assure Mary that in your smile you care 
you care for her as a woman and that you care for her as the mother of God. So as you walk slowly and graciously across the Judean hills, just visualize that you're leaning against the donkey for support and that you're supporting the mother of God. And each step of this journey is a step forward in the spiritual path. It's a step forward into positivity. And you're leaving behind old ways, old ideas, old thought patterns that may have been destructive. And what you're feeling and sensing now in your heart is that you're being empowered to take back your power as a child of God, to reclaim your divinity as a co-creator of God. I invite you to take a deep breath and now release any tension or fear and give it to the Mother of God. And as you breathe in now, breathe in the love of the Holy Family for you. And in your out breath, express your gratitude to them for what they did for you so as to bring the Son of God to you. But you have an important part to play now because you are walking in faith, in trust, in love. You are experiencing selfless love. You're experiencing spiritual passion. You're almost experiencing mystical orgasm where your soul is leaping in your spirit, where your heart is beating so fast with joy that all you can do is to come into the presence of God and say, here I am, Lord, here I am, use me. Let my hands and my feet be yours and let my heart be yours. Here I am. And Mary looks at you and knows that you are experiencing the joy of being in love with the Beloved. Relax now. Savor these moments. These are precious moments of your spiritual journey. And they're yours and yours alone. Be at peace now. Be at peace in your mind, in your body, in your spirit.
And now I would like you to just be still and savor the moments we have shared with you. And I'm guided just to share the prayer from Henry J. Newman. Lord, I live out in the open for most of my everyday life. Let me find the offspring of the root of Jesse so that his grace and blessings will flow to my outer life, where I must face the turmoil and temptations of life. Grant me also a recognition of the fact that my inner life with you is the greatest reality. Amen. Amen. And in the name of all that is sacred, and in the presence of Brother Sun and Sister Moon, in the company of all the angels and archangels, I ask the Holy Family, who are looking down on you and me, I ask them to bless you and to fill you with the peace of God. A peace this world does not understand, but you do. So go into that peace and experience the passion of simplicity and all that there is. Thank you for being here. May God reward you and may he bless you. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, haxet bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, peace, peace, till we meet again. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Thank you.